In the next, uh, I think, six weeks, we're going to talk about the church. Ano po yung simbahan? What is the church when we say we go to church or we are the church? What does that mean? Right? Napaka important, very critical for everybody to know the theological concept or the framework of what the church is. No, kasi maraming oras ng buhay natin hanggang pagtanda natin, we actually give to the church. Just by attending a church on a Sunday would take you around two to three hours, depending on traffic, parking, and kung uh, pagkuha ng kotse, you know. All these things we do on a Sunday, yung iba po sa atin dito, and I appreciate you guys naliligo on a Sunday, right? Because you're going to church, all right? Or some of you, you prepare your best clothes on a Sunday. That's a time for you to really come and worship God, right? So many of the things we do, we do because we go here on a Sunday. So might as well know what the church is. And not only that, but after church service, we are called to be the church in the world. What does that mean? What does that entail? Ano bang itsura nun? Ano bang mark ng isang simbahan? So we want to look at that today. The word church is the word ecclesia, which means an assembly of people consisting of all those who belong to God. In short, pag sinabi po natin church, it's not a building, it's a people. So if Vimo closes next week on a Sunday and we meet at Jollibee, it's a church, right? It's if we meet at Makdo, it's a Mac church, right? right? Or if we meet somewhere else, it becomes a church. Meron po tayong victory groups, 400 plus victory groups during the week. Those are churches meeting in smaller setting. We are the church. Okay? And uh, I remember there was a time uh, when I was in grade school, I've learned this song that I want to sing for all of you today. Right? It's, it's actually a rap song that... that Introduce me to the concept of what the church is. Because every time, they would ask, oh, pupunta ka church? So for me, growing up, the church was a building. I, I go to church, right? But the song was different. And I'll, I'll wrap it for you in a slower version, okay? So sabi nung kanta, you can't go to church as some people say. The common terminology we use every day, you can go to a building that is something you can do, but you can't go to church because the church is you. So I was great for, I was... Given this concept of what the church is, Joey, okay, ba? Oh, yeah, break it down. All right. So, Chinese rapper in the house, okay. Tawag nila sa high sa lumpia rapper. So, but what that means is, wow, okay, the church is not a building. I am the church. In fact, if you look at scripture, oh, the church is actually a group of people. It's not a building. In fact, the temple will be destroyed, right? So, that means we are the church. So that was a new concept for me. At baka marami sa atin, it's a new concept for us. It's a fresh concept of what the church is. Uh, one thing that I am so thankful of, this morning I was in my quiet time, listening to the Lord, and as I closed my eyes, you know, just the Lord reminded me of, of the recently concluded me and my dad camp. And I was thanking the Lord for the church, for the community, the church community I'm in, right? And... Nagpapasalama lang ako kay Lord. Sabi ko, Lord, thank you talaga. Nadinala mo ako dito sa church. My life or the path of my life has changed because of the relationships I've met and the people that I've met here in church. And those whom I build closely with has changed the course and the path of my life. No? As you all know, we just came from our uh, Me and My Dad camp. No? And uh, this was an Instagram post that I put uh, now, me and my dad camp was uh, a good picture of the church. No? It's not just a camp. It's actually a community of men with their sons and daughters coming together for a traumatic one and a half days no? for the dads. No? So, totoo lang, no? Pagka, you know, me and my dad is like, it's one of those camps that you love to go and leave a God. Okay, it's something like that. Yung emotions mo mix pag tatay ka. Gustong gusto mo siya, pero ayaw na ayaw mo din siya. Right? Kasi nga ang hirap. Like, I'll tell you, my, my experience has always been traumatic and joyful at the same time. Every year, sa me and my dad. Magna nine years na ako nag me and my dad ka. Right? And, and I'll tell you why it's traumatic and why it's joyful. Okay? It's very, I'll start with the trauma, okay? Right. When we say traumatic, I get viber messages of, ngayon lang ako nakatulog ng 14 hours after me and my dad. Yung mga ganong mga, ano, wah, sarap pala matulog sa kama. Ganon yung mga viber na mga tatay, right? But, 
Every year kasi, pag may, syempre, nagka-camp kami, no? Mostly summertime. So, sobrang init talaga ng me and my dad. No? So, pipitch ka ng tent. Kami, veterano na kami. Doon na kami sa may gilid na medyo may... But for this year, may canopy kasi aside from the tent. So, sa hapon, medyo hindi mainit. Pero sa gabi, sobrang init. Eh, matutulog ka na. Eh, medyo maaga kami natulog. Mga 8.30, 9 o'clock. Pinatulog ko na yung mga bata kasi tomorrow game time pa. So, 8.30, nakahiga na kami. At around 10.30, nakaupo kami tatlo sa tent. Tatlo kami nakaganon. Ang init. Init. Hindi ko kaya ang init. <laughs> init. Yung daughter ko, ganun. Yung anak ko rin, parang init na init. I cannot sleep, I cannot sleep. It's a camp. It's really like that. Diba? Parang sobrang init. As in, pawis na pawis kami. Tapos, pinapapa kami ng lamok sa loob. Kasi yung tent namin, may butas. Tapos si Ryan Zipper, so nakakapasok yung mga lamok. Eh, yung mga lamok doon, grabe, ang utak. Hindi ko magana yung mga citronella spray namin. Every hour po kami nag spray ng citronella. Imagine mo lahat ini spray ko. The next day, hindi na kami kailangan maligo dahil amoy citronella kami. Right? Pero walang effect dalang utak ng mga lamok kasi kinakain kami. So yung anak ko, sa ko sobrang medyo a little traumatic, but at the same time, the next morning, pagising ng anak ko, nakaganon yung mata. Kinagat ng lamok. Tapos yung tenga medyo makapal. Kasi nagkinagat din lamok. Ako din, dami kong kagat ng lamok. Diba? Tapos, basta parang, ang, ha, parang gusto mo na umuwi, pero wag, me and my dad to eh. Yung Christian side mo, wag. Diba? Para to sa anak natin. Love naman natin sila. Ilang oras na lang. Diba? Parang, diba? So, pero nung tinanong ko yung anak ko, sabi ko, ay saya, from 1 to 10, how would you rate the camp? Sabi niya, 10! 10! I really enjoy the camp. Grabe, kinagat na lahat na. Ang hirap, ang init, di siya makatulog. 10 daw. You know, so these are moments where you, wow, you're just thankful that you're in community. Kasi paglabas mo ng tent, nandun lahat ng tatay, parang tuwan-tuwa ka na, hindi lang ikaw yung hindi nakatulog. <laughs> Hindi lang ikaw yung pinapak ng lamok, di ba? Yung mga amuraw pa, nasira din yung zipper. Kaya hindi ako makareklamo. Akin may butas eh. Doon yung butas ko medyo malaki, sabi ng mga lamok, pasok tayo dyan, gano'n. Right? Sa mga amuraw, hindi nila masara yung zipper dahil sira yung zipper nila. Nakitulog sila sa kabilang tent for four. Pito po sila doon. So, hindi mo ako makareklamo. Tapos hindi ko rin sila ma-invite kasi nga, ang daming lamok sa amin. No? So, well, it's, life is hard in the Philippines. You know, so... So medyo hirap, no? pero parang imagine mo, di ba? Pag, but the next day, you're enjoying it because you're in a community of men. I think that's the power of the church. And that's just one mini aspect of the church. I'm not even talking about this is the theological frame. It's not. It's just one part of the church and there's actually more if you look at it and you kind of enjoy it. Thank you, God, na naging Christian ako. Lord, thank you rin na dinala mo ako sa victory. Lord, na ito yung naging home church ko. That I get to do this. I get to have other fathers that I can walk with and enjoy with. Right? The church. What is the church? Yeah. Ano bang mark ng simbahan? That's why the name of our series is Church TM or Trademark. Right? Now, sa mga nanonood ng NBA Finals, sino nanonood ng NBA Finals? Tomorrow's the last day, by the way. Okay? <laughs> May tagline ng Toronto. Okay? Ang tagline ng Toronto, We the North. Right? Because for the first time in NBA history, a country, the most loudest fan base in NBA is Toronto. Because the whole uh, Canadian territory, country, is rooting for the Toronto Raptors versus a state. San Francisco, Golden State, right? It's a country versus a state. Kaya sobra nilang ingay, sobra nilang saya. And when you say we are the North or we the North, Ang sinasabi nila, we have a certain distinct quality. We're the North, you're the Golden State, and this is who we are. We the North. Okay? And imagine the church should be the same way. When we say, we the church, ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Kaming mga Kristiyano, ano bang sabihin ng mundo? <laughs> Pag tinaglay natin to, we the church, how would that look like? YouTube mo yan, YouTube mo ang church. Aside from sermons, makikita mo mostly are negative videos of people preaching on the streets. They, they're, you know, 
trying to do controversies and scandals. And sometimes the world think of the, thinks of the church or sees the church that way. We, the church, oh, we don't like the church. We like Jesus, we don't like the church. Right? Because, kung hindi po tama, we don't have a right biblical understanding of the church and its role and its purpose and aim, then we will miss what we are truly about. That's why napaka importante in next few weeks na then, because we're going to look at what the church is. Right? For every organization or movement, it should always stand for something. It differs from others. What sets us apart from other organizations or other movements? What's our mark? Diba? Ano yung tatak natin? Pag sinabi mo, diba, tatak Pilipino, ibig sabihin, puno ng soy sauce yun, Right? Pag tatak Chinese, puno ng MSG yan. Diba? So, alam mo yung may mga tatak yan sa pagkain, diba? tatak ganito. And, and you get to see that, right? And now when you say the church, what differentiates us? Nalala ko sa business, diba? Like yung Apple, it started in a garage. But since day one, they said, we're not going to target the the ones using Microsoft or IBM, we're going to the artists and the innovators. So we're going to design the computer in such a way where we're going to empower creators, right? Sino sa inyo dito, Apple product po ang gamit nyo? Taas ang kamay. May iPhone kayo. Naka, right? sino, sino po gamit ang Apple? Okay, we've got innovators and creators here. Max, okay? Right? Kasi naka-Apple kayo. Sino dito naka-Samsung? Right? Sila po ang nagpapatakbo ng mundo. Okay, so, right? Sino na kawawi? Pagpe-pray ko po kayo, okay? okay. Hindi niyo na po ma-update yan. Okay, so. Niloko kayo ng mga ninuno ko. Okay. Balik tayo sa message, okay? <laughs> Sinabi mo, church, benta niyo na mamaya. Okay. Sa baba lang. <laughs> okay. Pero lugi na kayo. But when you say the church, what does that look like? Who are we? How do people perceive us? Or how does God want us to be? This is what we're going to talk about. When you see victory, what does it stand for? What do we believe in? Sino ba tayo? Because we're part of the bigger church. We're not the only church. We are just one small part of the whole body of Christ in the world. Okay. Now, we we'll look at Acts 2. Okay? And we we'll look at Acts 2, verse 24 to 27. But I have to give you a background first. We start with verse 1 and 2. This is the context. I, I would have a very long introduction and a very short message. Right? So in Acts 2, today is the day of Pentecost, by the way, around the world. Churches are celebrating the day of Pentecost. In the day of Pentecost, that's when the Holy Spirit came. Right? When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Verse 3, And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them, and rested on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, when the early church or the church in the book of Acts started, nawala na si Jesus eh, dati disciples, now they started the early church. This was the birth of the early church. That's why they call it the Acts church, right? Or the church in Acts. It started with what? Very critical po ang role ng Holy Spirit when the church started. You can't move without the Holy Spirit. I know the Holy Spirit is, what, is the most neglected person of the Trinity. We talk about God all the time and Jesus all the time, but somehow we don't talk much about the Holy Spirit. That's why here we talk about the Holy Spirit. Because it all started when the Holy Spirit came upon the believers and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So, napaka-importante po ng role ng Holy Spirit and you've got to do more studies of that, right? Because that's not our topic today. Then, we jump now to verse 22. They were filled with the Spirit. Now, Peter preaches the gospel, right? They went out and started preaching when the Holy Spirit came on them. They were so excited. And Peter now says, Men of Israel, hear these words of mine, Jesus of Nazareth, 
a man attested by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. Kilala niyo tong Lord, si Jesus, nakita niyo siya mag-miracle, mag-signs and wonders. You know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up. Losing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Anong ginagawa po ni Peter dito? Sinasummarize niya in a few verses the message of the gospel. That there was just Jesus whom God sent from heaven down to earth, would live here on earth, died and resurrected. Right? Namatay siya dahil pinako niya siya dahil sa kasalanan natin, kailangan niya mamatay, but on the third day, he rose from the grave. This is the summary of the gospel story. This rescuer came to rescue us, but instead of us praising him, we killed him. But then on the third day, he rose again, losing the pangs of death. He overcame sin. He overcame death. That's why followers of Jesus can live a very victorious life, forgiven and free. So this was the summary of the gospel. Let, then in verse 36, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So what was, again, Peter trying to say? Not only do you need the Holy Spirit, you also need to understand the story of the gospel, but this Jesus is actually king. And if there's a king, there is a kingdom. Napaka-importante yung lordship ni Jesus. This was how the church was started. With the power of the Holy Spirit, with the clear message of the gospel, and people who said, we will follow this king. He will be the lord of our lives. It was not a membership class. It was a life sentence of following a king and saying, I will follow and worship this king. I will be a disciple of Christ. I now live under new citizenship. Okay. I live under the kingdom of God and no longer the kingdom of men. Now when they heard this, ano sabi? they were cut to the heart okay. and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? We heard the message. We've seen the evidence of it. Anong gagawin namin ngayon? And Peter said to them, Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right? So those who receive the words, his words were baptized and they were added that day about 3,000 what souls. So when the day of Pentecost came, 3,000 people were added in one day. That's actually the population of Green Hills now. 3,000 on a Sunday. Right? Wala pang youth service. Itong Sunday lang. 3,000 in one day were added. Now, we end in verse 41. And from verse 41, it was years of doing the same things. And we jump now to verse 42 to explain what happened when they got saved Tapos sabi nila, sige, join kami dyan. Nung join sila sa sekta na yon, ano nangyari sa early church? Right? So we jump to verse 42. And they, and they devoted themselves, so they said, we want Christ, and now we devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. So ano sabi sa Bible? So verse 42, sabi ni Sabi ng writer, now that they've received Christ, now that they were part of the church, they were Christians, followers of Jesus, what they did next, and please, this is a critical part of your journey sa mga umaaten lang po ng church on a Sunday, right? You will never move forward if you don't get verse 42. They've received Christ, they've attended the community, and what's next? They devoted themselves to some things that they need to do to be part of the community. Now, the word devoted themselves or devotion in its original text means uh, 
to continue to do something with intense effort. Okay? Pag sinabi mo, devoted ako dyan. Gagawin. Sino dito nag-gym? You go to the gym. You're devoted. Okay? Okay. Mali yata example. Sino dito kumakain? Araw-araw. Yan. Devoted kayo kumain araw-araw. You do it with intense effort with the possible implication of what? Of extreme difficulty. Mahihirapan ka pero ginagawa mo, ine-effortan mo kahit mahirap. You devote to it. Right? Sa mga kapanuhunan ng mga matatanda, yung katang hopelessly devoted to you. Okay? Kung sino mang kumanta nun. Alright? It means, I will do with intense effort in spite of the difficulty. Sa mga mahilig kumain, kakain ako kahit hirap na akong huminga. Okay? Kakainin ko pa rin yan. Alright? Kahit na mamaganan pa ako, iinom pa rin ako ng soft drinks. Yan ang devotion. Okay? I will do it. And they devoted themselves to what? Of course, they devoted themselves to God. So, ang tanong, for everyone here, hard question to answer, very simple question, is, o may effort ka ba? Kahit effort. Okay. Wag mo nang intense. Yeah. O may effort ka ba? Is there an effort on your part to be the church? And how do you do that? The Bible says they devoted themselves to the what? Apostles' teaching. They went to the Word. They studied the Word. They had Bible studies. They would read and study Scripture together. At the time, there was no New Testament. They were studying Old Testament Scripture. They devoted, imagine more, intense effort in spite of difficulty. I will study the Word of God. Magbabasa ako ng Bible. Tandaan nyo to. And I hope you mark this. If you don't read the Word, tatagalogin ko na para mas maintindihan natin lahat. Kung di po tayo nagbabasa ng Bible, hindi ka ha, lalago. You won't grow. Impossible. If you don't study Scripture, you will not grow. Hindi mo pwede antay. Hindi, hindi. Yung pastor ko na, once a week, nag-aaral naman kami. No. The, the way... When you say, I'm devoted to it, it means I'm taking time and effort to really study the Scripture because I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm devoted to my God and I'll study this because I want to learn. I want to know. Right? So what was the teaching? If you look at Acts 1 and 2, they were devoted to the teaching of the Gospel. Yeah. Ano ba yung gospel? Pag may kaibigan ka at lumapit sa'yo, sabihin, bro, may iba sa'yo eh. Tapos, i-blunt na natin, no? sabihin ng kaibigan mo, share mo nga sa akin, ano ba yung gospel, gospel na yan? share mo ba? Alam mo ba? Or ang sagot mo lang, alam mo yun, Jesus loves you. Kulang yung mga konsepto. Kaya napaka-importante yung one-to-one, seven chapters lang yun. Yun na yung pinaka-basic. Chapter one ng one-to-one, paki-download po sa app nyo, libre lang po yun. Basahin nyo yung one-to-one, chapter one, yun po ang summary ng gospel. Okay? Pag may nagtanong, paano ba yung mga born again, born again? Chapter one ng one-to-one, it's summarized for you. Peter summarized in, in Acts 2, 21 to 24. Jesus lived, died, was buried, and resurrected for us so that we could be set free. Right? This is the gospel. Not only that, but the teaching was also about the kingdom of God. Basahin mo ang Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the epistles, you would see the evidence of the study of the kingdom of God. Sobrang daming parable ni Jesus about the kingdom of God. Ang kwento po ni Jesus noon, hindi tulad ngayon na naririnig nyo, yung una mo bang mamit, kung namatay ka ngayon, saan ka pupunta? Ay, sasama kita, di ba? Yun yung sagot, di ba? Right? Masyado tayong heaven-centered, hindi na tayo kingdom-centered. Si Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God. And that's why, 
isipin mo ngayon ang prayer natin, Lord, pag mamatay ako, Lord, sama mo ako sa langit, ha? Ano sabi ni Lord? Ganito magpray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Baliktad po yung prayer ni Jesus. Ano sabi ni Jesus? Magpray ka na yung kingdom ni God bumaba. Maramdaman ng tao sa'yo yung kingdom ni Lord. So it was not heaven-centered, it was kingdom-centered. Now, pag mamatay bang krisyano, punta siya langit? Of course, sabi rin sa Bible niya. Pero hindi po yun yung emphasis ni Lord. The emphasis of God was the kingdom. Why? Because when we're so heaven-centered, ang nangyari po sa mga Kristiyano ngayon, sa sobrang heaven-centered, wala na po silang ginagawa kundi antayin ang second coming ni Lord. Kaya po yung mga tao, natatakot, ayun na yung Kristiyano, pupunta na naman tayo, impyerno. Kasi yun yung kwento mo eh. Isipin mo pag yung mindset mo about the kingdom of God is, I will bless others. People will feel the presence of God. Saan mas nang tatanong ang tao? May lumapit na ba sa'yo at sinabi, Joey, pag namatay ako, saan po ako pupunta? Wala, di ba? Pero marami lumalapit. Joey, napansin ko may iba sa'yo. Ano ba yan? Why? Because you're living life in the kingdom. You're living with the kingdom of God in mind, not heaven. And that's actually an open door for people to get saved. Because the story is not just about when you die, you'll go to heaven. But now... You can pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus would say, here's the parable of the kingdom of God. Ilang beses niya inulit yun sa Bible. It was the effect of the gospel in society. So they were devoted to that, those kinds of teaching. How can I let the word of God affect society? How can I let the word of God affect me so it affects others? Not how do I let the word of God let me enter heaven, which is only one part, a mini part of Scripture in Jesus' teaching. But it's more about the kingdom of God. Ang unang mark po ng simbahan ng early church is this. There was a relentless love for the Word of God. Grabe yung effort nila in loving, in just loving to study Scripture. Gusto nila magbasa ng Bible. Gusto nila pag-aralan yung Old Testament Scripture. Right? They would memorize and hide the Word of God in their heart. Right? Kamusta po tayo on this department? Do we have a relentless love for the Word of God? Do you read your Bible in a regular basis? Do you have a plan in reading the Scripture? Again, we cannot be empty Christians. Dapat may laman. Okay. Message of the Kingdom. Let me skip, right? Second, as we would see, not only did they study Scripture, they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, there was a relentless love for the kingdom of God. Right? Kaya feel yung effect. Yun yung sinasabi ko, hindi po sila conversion, ano, conversion-centered, co-convert ko to, co-convert ko to. Hindi po sila ganun mag-isip. Mamumuhay tayo with the kingdom principles, tutulong tayo at ang tao na magtatanong at kung nagtanong, handa tayong sumagot. It changed the world. They were like, ano, tour guides. They were not salespeople. Pag namatay ka ba, so, saan ka ba? Hmm. Yeah. Kaya walang nakoconvert sa ganun eh. Tapos humingi ka pa ng offering after. Right? But they would speak of the kingdom. And people would see the change and the difference. And they would say, I like that, I like that. What's that? And they seek God. There was a relentless love for the kingdom of God. And so when we say we are the church, kahit saan po tayo pumunta, we bring the kingdom of God with us. Right? Makikita ng tao yung kingdom ni God. Right? So wherever you go, people should say, there's something, something here. I don't know. May iba lang. Right? Ang sarap na pag kami mga ganong mga uh, ano, Pag pinunta kami, nakalimutan ko sino kasama ko noon. Kami ata ni Francis noon. May gusto kaming rentahan. Pagpasok namin, parang mahilig siya sa mga, mga spirit-spirit ata. Sabi niya, tubingin siya sa amin, iba ang aura niyo. Naks naman. So, yeah. Christians po kami. Right? Hindi pa ako nag, 
hilamos nun, eh? right? Because of the relentless love for the kingdom of God, they would see the difference. Okay? If you live with the kingdom in mind. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the what? And the fellowship. There was an in- intense effort in the midst of the challenges to have fellowship. Okay? Or the word koinonia. Okay? Which means as mystery, mi- para may supernaturally in engraft kayo together dahil parehas yung faith nyo. Right? Meron ba kayong mga kaibigan na mga kristyano na alam mo pag di ka kristyano, hindi mo siya kaibigan? There's no way magiging kaibigan ko siya. Kasi ang layo ng mundo namin. Right? But many of my friends now, the deepest friendships that I have are with people who share the same faith and we might have different worlds. Right? Hindi kami lumaki sa parehas na mundo. Iba yung mundong kinlaki namin, but we're friends. Right? Jared is an example of that. Feel am si Jared, laking Amerika. Ako, laking ano? Tondo. Right? I grew up in Tondo. He grew up in America. So, ang layo ng mundo namin. There's no way we could have been friends. Lasal ka, di ba? Ibang tambaya namin sa lasal. Nandun ako sa mga tan-tananan. Sa Chinese group ako. Nandun siya sa mga English group. Right? Never kami mag jive But how come we're friends now? How come our daughters are friends now? Could only be God. Right? Mahilig siya mag-basketball. Mahilig ako maglaro ng basketball sa PS4. Iba yung hilig namin. Alright? Hindi ko siya naintindihan. Hindi niya ako naintindihan pag nagkakantuhan kami. Right? But those are things, right? Like, Gabby now is a friend. Randall, her dad is my friend who can also be my uncle. Right? So, parang, magkakabarkada ba akong 40 plus years old? Eh, 28 lang ako. Di ba? Parang, may, may connection. Parang, it can only be God. That we, I, I would have close friendships but you have to fight through the difficulty of age gaps, right? Of language barriers, of traffic. Layo, taganova si Jarrett, di ba? Ang layo ng ano, paglalaban mo yan para magkaroon ng community or mag adjust ka, right? So madami ngayon, magkakapitbahay na kami ngayon. Bakit? Imagine mo, pati yung tirahan factor ang community. Malapit na ako kay ganyan. Magkapitbahay na kami ni ganyan. Mas mahal ang renta dito, pero kapitbahay ko siya. So kung naubusan ako na asukal sa kanya, di ba, tipid din in the long run. So, right? But you can never pay for that. And we've talked to others. You know, you might pay a little more here, 2,000, 3,000 a month. Oh, but imagine the perks of being my neighbor. Naks! Okay, or, or we're neighbors. And our kids would be neighbors. Can you pay for that? You cannot pay for that. The community. Right? There's power in it. We'll discuss more of this on week three. Okay, expound natin kasi four out of the six verses talks about relationship with others. Dito sa Acts 2. So it would take actually more than 30 minutes to talk about just this subject. So I will skip this one. And so what happened next? What was the result? And all came upon every soul, right? All of them were, wow, this is amazing. This is what I felt this morning. So I was praying to the Lord, Lord, thank you. I was in awe of being part of victory, my home church, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, right? There was a sense of awe because Wow, healings were happening, breakthroughs were happening. Ang daming kwento, nagva-viral po yung kwento sa community nila, palabas sa mundo, that even the Romans actually um, took notice of. That's why in history, they would make a comment about this cultic sect called the Christian or the way. Kasi for the Romans, mga kulto ang Kristiyano nun. Di ba? Pero sila yung nag-aalaga sa mahirap, sa mga may leprosy. So they would say, there's something about this community. We don't want to be part of it, but they're so good. Even the 
unbelievers would comment about it. Everyone was in awe because of what was happening. All who believed were together and had all things in common. Nagtutulungan po sila. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. Or in short, there was the spirit of generosity was so high in the community. Nagtutulungan. Walang iwanan sa community. Imagine mo, no, parang tayo to, eh. 3,000 were added to the church. We're 3,000 plus every week as a community. Right? It's like us. You come here and you're given an opportunity to connect with thousands of people. Right? Kaya kung wala ka pang connection dito, hindi ko alam kung kaya problema yun. Right? Because at the time, it didn't stop them from having community with 3,000 people. But most likely, they were in smaller groups, in barangays. Si Sector A, Sector B, Sector C, sa dami nila, tatlong libo. Right? Pero magkakadikit yung mga bahay, bahay nila. They were together, they would meet together. Right? And they would build relationships, and there was a spirit of generosity. Nangangailangan si ganun, tulungan natin. Nangangailangan si ganun, tulungan natin. Right? These are some of the stories that we have even in our own local church. I remember one of my most, if they would ask me top three, this would always be my top three most unforgettable moment in Green Hills. One of them, I don't know if it's top one, two, or three, but one of them in the top three. We had a visiting pastor who came here. Nobody knew about his situation except me. Right? They were in deep financial crisis because the wife had a medical thing and every week they had to inject expensive medicine in her body. Right? It was getting to a point of, man, we don't know where to get the money anymore. I invited him here to preach, so he preached, never told the story to anyone during the preaching. And as always, I've been in the morning service. I've been the lead pastor in the morning service for a long time. Every time kasi may visiting pastor, sana alam nyo na rin, ina-announce ko na rin ngayon, right? Pag may mga visiting mission, lalo na pag missionary, right? Pag missionary, lalo na sa ibang bansa, tapos nag-preach dito, automatic, umakit lang ako, sabihin ko lang, guys, if you wanna bless our missionary, please do so, right? Code lang yon. Nung maliit pa kami, code din namin yon sa music museum. Oh, may visiting, parang dating gawin, guys, ha? Kayo nang bahala dyan, right? Kung may gusto kayong bigay, right? But this one was exaggerated Exage talaga, supernatural. Nobody knew the situation. After the preaching, since he was a pastor, visiting pastor from the province, I told him, I went up and said, thank you so much, pastor, blah, 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 blah. And I said, guys, if any of you want to bless pastor, you can do so after the service. He was staying here to pray for people. But I'm telling you, sobrang nagulat ako to the point of naiyak ako na pinipigilan ko yung chicks kong gumaganon. Alright? Kasi yung pila, it was from here to there, not asking for prayers. In some supernatural way that I could not explain, people were taking out their money and giving to the pastor. Right? So, una, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mamaya, hindi multiply pa ata nun, wala pang Facebook. No? Nakaganito na siya. Sabi ko na sa, stop. Kumuha ka na ng bayong, okay? Kasi pera at bayong to, okay? So, get a bag, alright? Kasi awkward na eh. Kasi ang dami na, tapos may pila pa, tapos nagbibigay lang sa kanila. Parang hindi niya alam mo nung gagawin. Siyempre, nakakaya din na parang, oh, madami na akong pera, wag na kayo pumila, di ba? Parang ganun yung dating. So, parang, so we got a bag, put it there, and this happened in two services where he preached. Nobody knew their story. We just knew that God was showing up for him but God was also showing up to me and telling me, build a church that would continue to be generous because you'll never know. The pastor actually called me at around 8, 9 p.m. Sabi niya, Pastor Dennis, sabi niya, alam mo yun, parang nasa, nasa ano na sila, nasa hotel na sobrang mura lang kasi wala na sa bera. Sabi niya, alam mo yung napapanood mo sa pelikula, pag nanalo ng ano, ng mga raffle raffle tapos ang daming pera tapos gumaganong ganong ka sabi, andito kami umiiyak kami ng misis ko 
Kasi try namin bilangin, hindi pa namin mabilang. So, ginaganun-ganun muna namin na umiiyak daw sila. Right? Because they were not only zero, they were negative. And the money actually shouldered three months of medicine. Right? To, to make it through. Right? But it was just an amazing sight to see. Right? Just our people lining up. So I go, imagine if we continue to live this way to be a very generous church. Nasa atin, ang pera, pantulong din to, hindi naman to pang enjoy lang, pantulong din to sa tao. Imagine there will be nobody in need. I believe God has blessed our church. God has placed us here because God wants you to be generous. And just the spirit of generosity. All right. And day by day, look what happened. Araw, araw po, Day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. Hindi po yan communion, ha? Though communion is part of it. They were sharing meals together. Ganyan po sila ka-close. Yeah. Oh, kaya na. Tara. Right? They were, they know each other. Right? So, pag makita mo pa lang dito, no? May break na of mindset na hindi ka, atin lang ng Sunday. Mag-build ka dito ng community. Meron ka bang ka-lunch? May ka-dinner ka ba? Kung may problema ka ba? May tinatawagan ka ba from here? Not just your family members, but somebody outside who you can talk to, who can walk with you, cry with you, celebrate with you. They were sharing meals together with glad and generous hearts. This was in the midst of persecution. They were so happy. Why? They had community. The sense of community. Again, we'll expound more on this. But there was a relentless love for church community. Right? There was an effort to build in the midst of difficulty. Gusto lang sabihin, no? I don't know. I think I'll still be here on the third week. Right? Yeah. This is not a perfect church. Maybe some of you are like, huh? Yeah, it's not. We're not a perfect church. We make a lot of mistakes. We've offended so many people. We've made remarks in the past we might have regretted. That's part of community. Yeah, that's part of life. Our members here, we're not perfect, right? Tama ba? Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Alam ko mukhang perfect yan. Pero sabi mo, hindi. Okay. All right. We're not. Lahat po tayo may issues. Hindi naman nakakagulat yun, di ba? Ano may issue ka? Tulad na may issue rin ako. Yeah. At lahat ng tumayo dito, may issue sa buhay. Right? Yan yung sinasabing, they were devoted to fellowship. Let's work out our issues. Yeah. Ngayon, lumalaki tayo. Lalo tayo mag-work out ng issues natin. Bakit? Pamilya tayo. Hindi tayo nagsisiraan. Ayaw natin nagchichismisan dito. Yeah. Ayan, yan yung isang ayaw na ayaw namin. Gossip. Right? You make up stories. Right? We fight for unity. Why? We're family. Right? Now, we know we have flaws. You know? We know sometimes we sin. We're flawed people. We make mistakes. We get offended at times. That's part of community. Okay lang yun. Wag ka agad-agad aalis. Okay? Let's walk it out. Right? Sabihin nyo kami, kung offend ka sa itsura ko, sabihin mo. Okay. Paayos mo mukha ko, di ba? So, right? I don't know if there are issues that you might have or things. I do hope you understand this is community. Right? We started with 200 people. We're times more than 10 now. We're, we're 3,000 now. But this is community. Lumalaki lang nga. Mas kailangan labanan ngayon na mas maging close tayo. Bakit? Lumalaki na tayo eh. Kaya namin sinasabi, sana may victory group kayo. Bakit? Yan yung magiging kaibigan mo dito sa tatlong libong tulad sa New Testament. Yan yung problema nila. Biglang lumaki. Problema, sino, sino maghanda ng pagkain? Anong buffet? Ang ano yun natin? Di ba? Yan yung pinagmitingan nila. Si pastor, siya na lagi nagluluto. Hindi na siya nagpipreach. Nakakantok na siya magpreach kasi hindi na siya nagpipare. Di ba? So they were, they were debating about this because of the growth of the church. Which will always happen if the church becomes the church. A healthy church would always grow. But I hope we grow not just numerically, we grow in quality. 
And that's why we have a series like this. Let me end with this illustration. If you look at Acts 2, the relationship is vertical and horizontal. Right? Mana. Vertical, your relationship with God, fix it. Know the gospel, the kingdom of God. Why? Because as you live in community, this is the one that will give you life. This is the one that will give you unconditional love. This is the one that will give you acceptance over sinners like you. Itong relationship mo kay God. Right? Hindi tayo maging perfect. Iba sa atin, immature pa. Okay lang yan. Right? Bakit? Part of the journey yan. Right? But then, this one, if this is fixed, this will be easily fixed in the midst of dysfunctions. Okay? Dahil meron tayong relationship kay Lord. Build your relationship with God. A relentless love for the Word. A relentless love for the kingdom and the king. And a relentless love for church community. And look what happened. And praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The unchurched. We're looking at this persecuted small group, thousands of people, and saying, can we be part of that every day? Somebody was, can we be part of that? Can we join that community? Pasok lang. Come. Right? And I hope in your own group, even you yourself, sa office, sa campus, hindi yung pag gusto makipag-relationship, password muna. Sabi mo, Jesus is my personal Lord and say, sana hindi po ganon. Right? Accept everyone who comes. This is a church for broken people like you and me. This is a church for people with issues. Okay? And this is a church where I will mature and journey with people who are not perfect. Right? So welcome to our church. This is who we are. And this is God, where God wants us to be. Can we just all bow down our heads and let us pray?